Hey guys, we are here for Insecure, the season finale, season four, episode 10. Okay, y'all. So, where we left off last week, um, you know, Issa and Lawrence back together. They doing a thing. Uh, Molly and Andrew, they've been kind of uh, iffy or whatnot. And, you know, we saw how Nathan was a little touched that Issa was back with Andrew, but he was still, you know, open to being friends. So, the, se the episode opens. To oh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to your girl. Much appreciated. But, um, so it starts off with Issa and Lawrence. They're, like, at the farmer's market, or I don't know, look like a farmer's market, or maybe they just have that all the time going on in L.A. And it turns out Lawrence got the job um that's in san francisco east a little silly self talking about some the windy city he like no that's chicago shot town but yeah she's like no chicago the chili silly because it's cold i'm like girl hush <laughs> um but yeah so then they kind of have a little bit of a serious conversation quick conversation because they still at the farmer's market he's like so is it a deal breaker that i'm moving or whatever so she's a trolley nigga now or you know do you think we can make this work? And she was like, well, you make me happy. Um, uh, a plane ride is only 45 minutes. Um, and then, you know, maybe even, they even discussed possibly her moving out there. And he was like, you have to make new friends, your work, your family's out here. She was like, shit, I might need new friends anyway because, you know, her and Molly are on the rocks and all that. So he was like, okay, bet. So it looks like things are going good. They hugged it out and kissed and stuff. And from there, it jumps over to Molly and Andrew. They're at one of her work events. And they, you know, just talking shit about, you know, co -work. You know how if you bring your bae to an event and you get to meet all the people that you've been talking shit about <laughs> this whole time. So that's pretty much he there going through the motions, being the, you know, supportive boyfriend at her work event and everything. And then, um, I don't know, one of the newer uh, lawyers or whatever, there um invited andrew and her to go to like another little set that all the lawyers were gonna go well not all of them we're gonna go to for some drinks after that andrew did not seem to be feeling it but molly really wanted to go and she was like oh if i um you know set up for them to play one of your artists would you mind um going and staying out for a little bit longer he's like man i guess but you could already tell that you know he had or he even said it like this is cool, you know, I don't mind being at this, but staying out longer with these people, I'm just not feeling it. And she just kind of blew over it because she just wanted to go do what she wanted to do because that's Molly. Um, and that's going to catch up on her ass. So from there, uh, we see uh, Nathan's barber shop, you know, because he already told Issa that he, um, him and a few of the other barbers or people, hairstylists or whatever, joined together and they bought um the barbershop out which is an awesome uh thing for him and them you know and she was coming in because she wanted to see he has a backspace that he plans on um using for i think to give uh to sell products and to give like uh haircuts you know charity stuff um give haircuts to uh people who are homeless or don't or jobless or something like that i guess for interviews and stuff like that you know good positive for the people stuff which is awesome in real life he'd be real about the people too because if y'all ain't seen his ig and all that stuff off subject but i commend kendrick samson for the work he's been putting out here on these streets had to say that um but anyway back to the show <laughs> Um, yeah, so she was going to use the backspace for her next event, which I believe is still like a wellness thing. And she's like, that's dope. You know, I really make some happen with this space. Thank you so much. So he goes and he's like, you know, man, when he be talking, he be getting real sexy with it. Like, you ain't got to be that sexy. Like, we just talking as friends. Calm down, you know. <laughs> so he goes and tells her, he's like, you know, I'm sorry about um, you know, coming at you about Lawrence and y'all getting back together, but it kind of made me, bothered me a little bit more than I thought it would. Like, it made him feel some type of way. I'm like, oh, we immediately caught on to that because you kind of started going a little hard when she said that they was back together. And she was like, okay, I'm sorry that you feel that way, but, you know, I'm with Lawrence. And he was like, no, nah, I get that. She's like, do you think, is it going to bother our friendship? He's like, no, nah, I just, you know... 
you know, I just want to get that out there in the air, you know. So he's just still putting it out there like, yeah, I do still kind of feel something for you. But, you know, I don't want it to, like, mess with our friendship. And I'm sorry I came at you the way I came at you about it. So it seems like things are cool and they brush it off with a little joke the way they do. And then from there, we go back to um, Molly and Andrew. They're back from the little event um, or whatever, her work thing. And Andrew wants to watch uh, Final Latoya, the uh, reunion or some shit. And she's like, oh, no, I want to go lay down. I've been drinking and all this. And Andrew has his passive aggressive boots on. And he all like, oh, yeah, we going to do stuff on your time again. And she's like, what's that mean or whatnot? And he was like, it just seems like every time, you know, if, if they were at a, a work event for him and she wanted to leave, it would have been all hell and um would have broke loose and she would have had a whole fit but since it was her doing him doing stuff with her you know um you know he went along with he's like i always do everything that you want to do everything is on your time and he was like it just what the fuck you know and then she was like what are you talking he was like even when it comes to my brother and stuff like you didn't come she's like i'm sorry about that i you know wasn't trying to uh you know it's like i told you i'm sorry about the whole thing but your brother was you know, the way he treated me, blah, 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 blah. So, they was, like, in the middle of an argument, and it looking like it was about to get way more heated, but Molly's phone kept ringing, and it was Kelly. So, after Kelly called, I guess, I don't know, the second or third time, she's like, what? So, it jumped from there, and all of a sudden, we at um, Derek and um, Tiffany house. And I'm like, what the hell going on with, that, with them? But I already had an inkling it had to do with Tiffany because... There was a lot of telltale signs that Tiffany had been having uh, to me immediately when I saw her behavior after the baby. She looked like she was going through some like, you know, baby blues, postpartum, depression and whatnot, whatnot, which is a lot more common than people think. And people brush it off a lot and they just think, oh, give it time, this and this and be OK. But sometimes it's not like <laughs> it can get real messed up, like really messed up. But, you know. So they can't find Tiffany. He said that, um, Derek said that he talked to Tiffany last night and she just said she was going to the movies and she was supposed to be, she said she needs to get away. So she said she was going to go to a hotel and he hadn't heard from her since. So she not answer her phone, nothing. He don't know what's going on. Um, or whatnot. He's like, I've called her, I've emailed her, all this. And I'm like, y'all don't have like... I'm sorry, like, when it comes to email, like, on our my home computer, me and my husband or whatnot, he could get into my stuff. Like, I, did she take her computer? Like, you can go, get into people's email. Like, you can get into my email if you just go refresh a page or something and see what I've been doing. I mean, not that it's, like, a trust thing, but I'm like, if it's my husband or if he's trying to get a hold of, my husband's trying to get a hold of me, he can't, even if I'm not, don't necessarily want him, <laughs> he can kind of find me in certain type, some type of way. By tracking me through whatever I'm doing through email. Like, there's so many, there's so much of a trail you can leave behind. Unless you go cold and you pay with everything for cash, you can be found, okay? So, they're calling, um, and uh, Molly's uh, there when Issa pulls up. Molly's there. Um, um, Kelly's there. Um, it seems like, I don't know if it's uh, Derek's side or, um, or uh, Tiffany's side, mama and sister and whatnot. But they're there calling around trying to find out where the hell Tiffany is and see if they can um, locate her if anybody has any information on her but ain't nobody really telling them nothing so they like fuck it let's just go to these places where we think she might have been and just track her down that way so they end up going to the movie theater asking about her and they end up getting a lead or whatnot um through because they that that uh theater sells alcohol so they went to talk to the bartender she said she had been drinking about five um they said she was looking toe up too and she had about five margaritas then she left and got an uber and um that's what i was saying through the emails and stuff because they were like oh um he's uh derek was like yeah she got it uh, i could see the uber charge or whatnot immediately <laughs> Uh, through your email, it will tell you where he was uh, going or whatnot, but I guess he doesn't have access to whatever Uber, they don't have a joint account or whatever, 
or lift or whatnot. But Issa was like, okay, the only time uh, Tiffany's drank like that is when she wanted to go out of town. But her job, she couldn't because of her job. And then they went to this Mexican joint for food and whatnot and margaritas. So she was like, let's try that place. But there's like five locations. But Issa used her lift tracking abilities because she used to driving around the city. So she could tell which one is the closest for that amount of money. They go to that place. Woo, woo, woo. They asked the dude who was there, you know, hey, have you seen this girl? He was like, man, I'm kind of checked out. I don't, you know, really fuck this job like that. You know, I don't be paying attention. It's like, understandable. But they're like, oh, can we see the surveillance camera? So they look on the surveillance camera. Finally, they see her go in, get some food, and leave out. But then she got on a bus. I'm like, girl, what you doing? Get on the bus. Like, <laughs> I hate the bus, y'all. I just hate it. But I, the bus there, I don't know. Just the bus anywhere just sucks to me. But, um, yeah, so, but, I mean, you got to do what you got to do. If you got to ride the bus, then ride the bus then. Um, but, uh, you know, I want to be bougie with it. <laughs> but, uh, so she gets in a bus. Like, where's she going on the bus? And then they were finally on the bus um, and calling around. And Derek, he was, like, sitting there talking with Issa and um, Molly. He was like, man, I knew she was sad after the baby. I didn't think it was going, it was this bad to this point where she would just disappear. And I just thought, you know, if I gave her time, he's like, you know, he blaming himself. I'm like, he is a good dude. Like, really good. She, they were like, nah, you know, don't blame yourself. You're a good father. You're there for her. You be taking care of the baby a lot, more than a lot of men would and all this other stuff. It just, you know, which he shouldn't blame himself. It really ain't got shit to do with um, him. It's like when it comes to postpartum, I mean, I've seen it time and again. Like, it's just sometimes people just get overwhelmed and they're sad and they don't want to sit there and seem that way because people be like, oh, how can you be sad? You just had a beautiful baby, blah, blah, blah. So a lot of people just don't understand or whatnot. And there's like a stigma around it, but it's very true and very real. And again, even though this show is very short, I love that they touch on like all these issues like postpartum, mental health, um, uh, black women uh, dying during uh, labor or people um, not, you know, paying attention to black women, especially when they're um, in hospitals uh, for giving birth to their baby and all that stuff, the mortality and all that. I love that they address all these things. So anyway, don't let me not get off track. So, um, Kelly's on the phone. It's some white, crazy white person on the bus talking about some, you look like my, my inner black woman or some, some crazy shit. And she was like, well, my outer black woman said she's fuck up or something. Get out my goddamn face or something. And he was like, uh, everybody be quiet. She's on her call. So Kelly ends up getting through to the Sheraton cause that's the bus that that's, um, the hotel that's along that bus line. And they, um, she ends up finding out that's where Tiffany is. They get into it with the damn bus driver because he didn't want to let them off. Y'all bus drivers be on that. And I know that they're not supposed to let people off. They're like, it's an emergency. Let us off the bus. But they were like, you got to wait to the next stop. Like, dang, can I just get off? It's a red light. Can I just get off right here? Like, seriously, bus drivers be serious about not letting you off. But sometimes when they want to let you off certain spots, they're going to let you off. But when you try to be like, oh, my bad. Can I just get off right here, right here? They don't want to do it. I know, I know they're not supposed to. What is a red light? There was a sense of urgency, but he gave no fucks. And Kelly was like, fuck this. I'm about to press the open the door button. And then they got off. And then the bus driver, he is black, got the nerves to sit there and call the police that was um, across the way. Like, hey, police, police, whatever. So they all get off the bus and try to chase behind Kelly and them or whatnot. And um, he was, and then with the white dude too, cause talking about some, she was on the bus harassing us, and she was like, I ain't harass you, were nothing, but it, uh, uh, whatever. But we could get into this, but they was trying to es de escalate the situation, cause they was like, what this, what was this, and um, the police were like, well, what's going on, and all that, and then Molly was like, hold on, I am a lawyer, so you know, she busted out her uh, lawyerness. She's like, I just want to know why is it that you're um, talking to us, black us, and not them, you know, the white people that was coming for them. And, and uh, the white cop was like, oh, no, no, not me, not today. <laughs> yeah, everybody just go your separate ways and go the fuck home. Yes, that's a good way to handle that instead of, you know, escalating because Kelly was like, I've been tased before. Tased me. I survived. It was like, no, girl, you peed on yourself that one time. <laughs> Remember when she was, what was it, uh, Coachella or whatever. But, you know, she was like, fuck it, you know, Kelly be about it. But they de-escalated and went on their ways to go find Tiffany. 
So they got to um, the sheriff's tent, got to her room and everything. You know, Derek knocking the door. She's like, who is it? He's like, babe, it's me. And then she comes to the door. She took her weave out and everything. So, you know, she was pressed or maybe she just had a wig on. And, you know, she's played by, uh, what's her name, Amanda Seals or whatnot. But she's she's had a natural hair going on. And she was like, baby, you know, she's like, I'm sorry. I just didn't know what to do. And she just looked real sad and, you know. What not? And they just, you know, Molly and them just standing a little bit back and whatnot. And she's like, I'm just so sorry. I'm sorry. And then from there, it jumps uh, to some really nice Eric's views of the city and uh, whatnot. And I love that they showed um, the mural that they have out in L.A. for Kobe and Gianna, R.I.P. And um, Nipsey Hussle, R.I.P. It's like, dang. Um, and they showed a lot of Princess, the one who works on the show, he directed it. I think he's the regular director. They had some guest directors uh, this season, but I think Princess usually directs it most of the time. But he directed this one, and I've noticed when he does the directing, he does a lot of beautiful city shots. So that was cool. Anyway, um, so from there, oh Lord. Okay, okay. So we get back to Molly. Molly's back at home, and she's talking to Andrew. And Andrew is like, you know, how's, you know, Tiffany doing? He's like, she's like, she back home and everything. She all right, but it's rough right now. And he's like, you know, I'm sorry. You know, they have been out all night looking for this girl. So she was like, so, you know, I'm sorry I had to leave out on, you know, our conversation. And he was like, no, nah, we got to talk about that right now. She was like, no, nah, let's just talk about it because it's not, if we don't talk about it now, it's just going to get worse, which is true. Just address that shit right then and there. Like, you were already exhausted. Come on with it. Let's, let's just get it out in the air. Whatever you got to say, let's talk about it. Say it. So he comes in Molly and he was just like saying, you could tell like the way his whole demeanor where this conversation was going once he got into it. He was like, you know, man, I just feel like we ain't been on the same page. And he was pretty much saying, you know, a lot of stuff about how Molly is like self. He was saying that before how she was not, I guess, selfish, I guess, because he does everything on her time. And, you know, even with the stuff with her, with his brother, so see, that really did bother him, especially when the brother um, extended that olive branch. And she was like, oh, no, I don't want to go. She could have just went. She could have had a little funky attitude. But she just went. Um, she had nowhere to be. Uh, and what else? And then she was like, well, you know, we could work at this. And he was like, she was like, this is the, he's like, is this where you think we should be at or whatever? And then he was like, um, she was just saying like, yeah, you know, people have a hard time on that. He was like, it shouldn't be this hard to be together. And he just kind of was sounding finite with, <laughs> with the way he was going with this. I was like, we knew exactly where he was going with this conversation. And then she was like, no, we both have never been in a relationship this long. That's got to mean something. And he was like, take away all that time. He's like, she was like, um, oh yeah, she was talking about all oh, this about your brother and stuff. He was like, he had been feeling like that before the whole brother situation it was just like it just seems like they just it's just not the right they're not the right people for each other or what and I'm like dang you just hung in that long but I can understand some people do that like well maybe if we just maybe just having a bad day you keep pushing it off and then it just gets worse and worse and worse and he just kind of I guess he hit a breaking point or whatnot and she was like we can I could change we can go to counseling we could do this do that you know she was just trying to say like trying to cling on to it and he was like forget all this time forget all this other stuff like what are you fighting for here and then she just looked like she was stuck like she didn't even know what she was fighting for it's like are you just fighting for the sake that we both have never been in a relationship th that long so it's it's gotta work or something are you just fighting because you know you really want to be he didn't say this but I, i'm in my mind i'm like are you fighting because you really want to be with somebody and have a baby and your biological clock is ticking like why is it that you holding on to andrew so hard especially when like it just seems like they be having these like, little unnecessary tiffs a lot you know <laughs> and whatnot it just i mean Issa even said like when andrew break up with your ass they ain't gonna have shit to do with me and that's exactly <laughs> what happened and uh, as you can see it coming because the way molly is and like from the other conversation that they were having, he was like, you know, 
everything's on your time. And if you don't get your way, and then she's like, what do you mean? Because he was like, I bend over backwards. Like, when have you ever bent over backwards with me? And I'm like, Andrew, always do whatever you want to do. If you feel like you feel some type of way, he'd be like, all right, fine, go ahead. And you can always see, like, it was just a built up thing of resentment he was getting with her because like first he wasn't getting enough she was, but then she brought up first you say you weren't getting enough time with me because of my work then I try to bring you to my work and you don't want to be there um and hang out and stuff so what do you want and all that but I don't know it just seemed like Andrew I don't know just wasn't working and from there you know Molly's sitting there like fucking big ass swollen eyes full of tears and I guess they was just over after that cause it jumps to Issa is at her house and then Lawrence come in and she's like he like hey you know how Tiffany you know just going over the same rundown she's like you know it's cool and everything she back home and you know they working it out blah 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 but then Lawrence just still looked like he just had something on his mind and he was like she's like what's wrong what's going on she's like he like condo uh I saw condola she came over the house um last night because she said she needed to talk and I was like oh lord ain't no reason a woman gonna come that hard after y'all have already had a um breakup conversation ain't no other reason besides a baby <laughs> so a lot of people have made that assumption already but I want to get them ben benefit of the doubt and wait for it to happen but yeah he goes and he says that Condola tells him that she is pregnant he was like she was like what the fuck he was like I don't even know. We're trying to uh, process this right now. Sorry, y'all, if y'all see. I'm trying to keep my husband out the thing. He all shirtless and stuff. My bad, y'all. It ain't that deep. <laughs> um. So she's talking about like, uh, that just threw me off. She's like, what you know? And y'all, this hit me a little different because this, I know this happens to a lot of people, but this has happened to me before. Like. You date someone, y'all take a break or whatever, a break baby happened and all that. And, I mean, granted, Issa didn't think that she was going to get back with Lawrence or nothing like that. And, you know, they were supposed to be being careful, but, and, you know, they're like, all right, are they going to keep it? And Condola, like, yeah, she keeping it because when she was with um her husband or whatnot, he, uh, she was like, she wasn't ready. And she was like, I'm ready. You know, she older, that biological clock tick. And she's like, she can't, you can't always wait for the right man to come along to have a baby with. If God bless you with a baby, sometimes you just got to keep it and keep it moving. And then, you know, she told him, because he was like, why would you keep it? But she told him, she's like, you know, you can be as involved as you want. Because Condola got money. She good, you know. And it's not about money, though. Like, your child, like, it's, it's just... It's messed up. So it's like, damn. And then Issa, she's just sitting there like, what the fuck? She's like, as soon as I think that things are going good and getting back on track, Lord, that always happens. I mean, this really hit because it's the exact thing happening before years ago. And like, you think that you get back with your boo or something. And then a, a wrench is thrown into the whole situation. And y'all, as much as women will say that they'll be all right with a person having a child, a lot of times, like, I thought that I was a bigger person in the, in the situation where I could be like, okay, well, maybe we could still work this through and whatnot. Turns out, at that point, I was not the a big enough person to deal with that because it's a lot because that woman is going to come first. Like, it, it doesn't matter. That woman's going to come first because she is carrying that man's child. And if she say jump and he got to go be somewhere and do something, she... She, she gonna get that attention and no matter how soft then it's gonna lead to arguments and all that but at least he was like she's like well do, are you gonna go be with her and he's like nah I wanna be with you but she was like yeah but you got a whole baby on the way so what the hell and whatnot. so y'all it's just um, I'm trying to turn this so it's I don't know if he husband's been I don't know what he doing I didn't know he's gonna be walking past like that um <laughs> But yeah, so it's just it's just it's just a mind fuck and it's a lot. He's like they still trying to process it and he just was like he didn't want to leave her in the dark about it. He wants to tell her and she's just sitting there like looking like damn and I'd be sitting there the same way looking like damn. So it's like is this the end of Issa and Lawrence before it even started back up? Who I don't even know how long they actually even <laughs> been back together, what like a couple months or whatever. 
But he says that she, um, it happened before he even got the job out. Because this could just affect Lawrence on the fact that, damn, it, it, does he want to take this awesome ass job? I mean, he probably should because he needs that kind of money. Because they said he's going to get a team, an assistant, and all this other woo woo shit. And it's just like, this is going to put a damper on all that. Because, I mean, you're going to have to be running back and forth to doctor's appointment with this girl and everything. And. It's going to be a lot. But she said you can be as involved as you want. But he don't want to be no deadbeat ass dad either. <laughs> I mean, I don't think he want to be. But then people going to look at him like he's shitty if he does, if he is deadbeat. So it's a lot. Issa, she's just like, man, it's fucked up. And I guess he just left or whatnot because then it just jumps to Issa um, sitting on her uh, balcony, which is a nice, nice ass view. Of, uh, they never show, they always show the inside of her apartment. Her uh, balcony view is bomb as fuck. And, you know, you see out off, over the hills and shit. And she just sit there and she just had to light one up, y'all, because she was totally blown. And I would have been blown as fuck too, because, girl, I've been there. Um, but I don't know. So we don't know what the fate of. I mean, it looks like at this point, it looks like Molly and Andrew is done. Um,. At this point, I don't know. It's up in the air with Issa and Lawrence, but I don't know if, what I what I get from Issa's personality. I really don't think Issa's gonna be here for the whole. We gonna be together, but your baby mama and all. The, mm, I mean, Condola's very independent, but she say that now. But she ain't never had no fucking baby. That shit can get real tiring real fast, and she can go have no breaks. So you just never know how that's gonna turn and be. So from there. The last scene is Issa going over to getting her some Ethiopian comfort food again and uh, meeting up with none other than her bestie, Molly. So it turns out they do, um, when shit really, really hit the fan, they did reconnect. And unfortunately, it has to be over. Molly in a breakup and Issa pretty much almost probably a breakup so maybe that just leaves an opening for her and um nathan now but i mean it's still too soon to be talking about that shit but yeah y'all that was the season finale of insecure i thought some more was gonna happen i was like damn i hope they don't get too tragic with tiffany's situation it didn't it was just like she just she just needs some help you know that's something to get her some help and counseling and shit um i mean it seems like that now it could be open possibility for um, what's the name? And when we go get a little bit more into, I know Kelly is for comical comic relief, but when we gonna get a little bit more into Kelly's life, like what she be doing besides supporting them? What she be doing? But anyway, yeah, y'all, that was it. Uh, I enjoyed this season. There was a lot of solo episodes of like where it really focused on like main like character, like the whole Molly episode with Andrew, the whole Issa episode by herself. We had about three episodes of like very focused on that character and like but I didn't like cause some of it just kind of stalled the story but I mean whatever but yeah y'all that was it season four episode 10 finale hope y'all enjoyed the ride I enjoyed it um what do y'all think is in store for next season I know I'm pretty sure that they were renewed for, yeah they were because I saw um Issa Rae she has said some shit about them still going back to work and working on the next season and writing and all that stuff who knows everything's gonna be so different um like especially shows that haven't even started filming yet they're gonna have to put in the the world today <laughs> and what's going on in the world today so a lot of shows and shit are gonna be very different in the next upcoming seasons if they haven't been filmed already yet and i look forward to that to see how it's gonna change people's perspective it might how it's gonna change shows um but yeah y'all i hope y'all having a great day doing well bless happy juneteenth um which was which is next weekend we are celebrating i hope y'all are too um yeah love you love you love you peace bye